Hi there guys, Gregor from Trevisio. Wanted to make a quick little video because I got a new toy in the post. So uh, yeah, here we go. This is the DJI Phantom 2. Uh, I got that with the Zenmuse combo, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but basically, yeah, you guys might have seen the DJI Phantom 1's been out for quite a while. Then they brought out the Vision, which had a camera attached to the bottom. Um, and I was kind of interested in the Vision, but the camera quality just wasn't what I was looking for. So I spoke to the guys, really cool company, heliguy.com. Take a look, really, really helpful guy, Maddie over there. He suggested I wait a couple of weeks or put my pre-order in for the DJI Phantom 2 and Zenmuse combo. And uh, yeah, it finally arrived. It was a little bit of a hold up in Japan at customs or something, but I got mine on the 21st of December. So I've had it for about a week. I've uh, been chewing up the props. <laughs> I'll explain all that stuff in a minute. Uh, but so far, it's been really good. A bit of advice that I should have taken was to go for the Viper, which is a smaller craft, also a four channel craft. So you get the same sort of control system with it. Um, and that would have helped me learn to fly. What I've been doing in the meantime is chewing up the props, so they kind of been breaking. I can show you there. Some of them are pretty bad. Uh, yeah, take a look at this one. Uh, yeah, he's seen better days. Um, so, good idea. If you are looking into this, get the smaller one. It costs like 34 pounds. I mean, I've already gone through about 40 pounds worth of props. So, uh, I have ordered some new ones. Uh, they just came in the post, literally took like a day or so from heliguy.com, uh, official DJI Phantom props, the self-tightening propellers. And um, yeah, we're going to go out and fly today. I'm going to go meet with a friend of mine, Dan, who's been flying for quite a while. Uh, really cool guy from a very cool company called PropellerNet down here in Brighton. And Dan's going to hopefully show me a couple extra things today. A um, couple things, I have switched on the NASA, not so super technical on this stuff, but I basically went into the assistant uh, now, the DJI Assistant software only works on, uh, on PC, but I managed to install Parallels desktop on my, one of my MacBooks uh, so I could get the Assistant running. And basically what I ended up doing was switching on the, um, switching on the uh, NASA functions. So what I was able to do was switch on these two buttons, which is uh, Course Lock and Home Lock, which I'll show you how that actually works later. Uh, plus... Uh, I was able to switch on the fail-safe mode over here, uh, which I'll also show you what that does later. So a good piece of advice, um, if you really do want to get into this, take your time, take it slow, go find a really big area to fly. There's a lot of tutorials online, um, it is pretty much ready to fly out of the box, but there's a lot of good tutorials online on the DJI site, check it out, that stuff will really, really help you. So for me, this is really just a hobby at the moment, eventually we might start using it in productions, and that's where this comes into play. So let me move this out the way. This is the Zenmuse H3 2D gimbal. And basically what this does is it allows you to attach a GoPro to the bottom and it basically stabilizes the GoPro. So it's got little motors in here. And let me just zoom, focus that for you. So basically uh, this little device, you attach the GoPro onto your app. It actually sends a signal, uh, so you attach the GoPro, you can even get FPV, which is first person view, which means you can see what the GoPro is seeing with specialized goggles and stuff, that'll be a step for later. But basically what this motor does is once the GoPro is attached, uh, if the device turns to the left, this will, motor will make it turn to the right. So basically the camera ends up staying really, really stable. So that's to come next, after I've sort of, you know, gotten into flying and feeling comfortable with it, then we're gonna go and we'll, we'll make another video, we'll attach the Zenmuse gimbal and we'll see how that goes. But enough of that, let's get out, let's go fly and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. So hey guys, yeah, we finally made it down to Brighton Beach. It's very bright over here, so sorry if I'm squinting. Uh, but there's Dan, that's Dan that I was telling you about earlier. Say hi Dan. And this is Dan's uh, quadcopter. So what exactly, what model is this Dan? Um, it's a, well the frame is a, it's called a Lunar Lander, I think. This is a Lunar Lander. Um, and then, yeah, you've got your Fat Shark FPV transmitter. Yeah. So that's going to this camera over here. Yep. And then you've got your GoPro <laughs> attached on the bottom. Um, yeah, man, so this is quite a modified rig. You kind of bought all the pieces separately and uh, did everything yeah. yourself. Yeah. yeah, very, very cool. Very nice looking controller. <laughs> yeah, so mine is definitely not as in-depth as that. But um, it's a pretty cool technology in this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick you guys in the chesty mount. I'll flip it back upside down and um, let's go flying and see how it goes. Hello. 
it's just from from the Really? How do we keep the camera facing us? I don't know. And then yeah, so yeah. Oh, oh. Hey there guys, the sun's finally come out as you can see behind me. It's actually quite a nice day, it's been raining all morning and it's been pretty miserable. Um, so yesterday we were flying down to the beach, sorry I didn't get to do much talking, so I keep slipping on the mud underneath here. It's been raining the whole morning, so uh, sorry I didn't get to do much talking yesterday down at the beach. Uh, so I thought I'd come out today and just get another flight in and hopefully try and teach you a few things. So. Uh, I'll stick the chesty mount again. Let's see, hopefully you guys can hear me through that. I've stuck the, the open back door on, on that one. And um, hopefully we can get some, some good training in today because I think it might just be my last flight before I attach the Zenmuse gimbal. There we go. Cool, so hopefully you guys can hear me through this thing. Um, unfortunately, I'm a one-man band today uh, so I don't have another camera operator with me. First thing I want to do is find a nice open area so I've come to this park over here. This is perfect because there's nobody around and it's really nice and big and wide. The main thing you gotta look for is not just stuff around you, but stuff that's tall around you because you can get up into the air pretty quickly and if you're doing big circles and you're turning around, you'll, you'll hit, end up hitting trees, big trees behind you and stuff. So you've gotta always be aware of what's around you. So first thing, switch on the controller. Uh, and then we're gonna switch on the phantom and then we're gonna watch the lights you make sure that we're in GPS mode that this is off I'll explain all those in a sec and we're gonna watch the lights so we've got three red one green the green means that it's in GPS mode and the three red means it hasn't picked up it's got very few satellites that it's seeing let's see if I can show you yeah there so it's one green three red but now this is in NASA M uh, mode not DJI Phantom mode. So when you get this unit, uh, it'll have a different flashing sequence, but they do give you a little card to explain it. There you go. So that means it's warmed up and it's still trying to find satellites. We've still got red. But the fact that you had all the flashing green there means that it has warmed up. See now it's only gone to green and one red flash, meaning that it's got, I think, uh, like three to six satellites. And essentially what you want is just a green flash. No red flash at all, meaning it's picked up more than six satellites. There we go. So green flash, it's picked up more than six satellites and we're good to fly. So to start, we're just going to push uh, both controls down into the middle. And then we're just slowly going to push it up. But not too slowly. Because what you'll see sometimes is that uh, if you push it too slowly it'll lift a little bit and then the wind might blow it over and the props will hit the ground so you don't want to go too slowly when you're pulling off uh, and there we go so you can see what's happening now is the gps is keeping it stable because it's got the green flashes i can pretty much push it to one place and it'll come back to the same place so that's really really good the first thing you want to do is just get up nice and high and you just want to practice forward and backwards. That's forwards. Go up a little bit again. And backwards. And go left. There we go, right. Okay, now this is the very simple stuff that you'll see on the DJI site. Um, this is really just the first couple of things you've got to learn to do. Now, it's really easy to get cocky and think you can go mad and do whatever and fly really close to the ground. 
it's your own funeral. If you do that kind of stuff, you're just going to chew up props and you're going to really mess yourself around. I've been practicing for about two weeks now um, and I'm feeling a lot more confident to do certain maneuvers. So I can, what I have been practicing a lot is pivoting around a certain point and being able to orientate myself properly. So you see the problem, what happens is, let me show you here quickly. So right here in these levers, you got right, you got left, you got forward and backwards. Let's bring the craft down a little bit and back towards us. What happens is if the craft turns around, then uh, Forward becomes backwards, uh, backwards becomes forwards, uh, right becomes left, left becomes right. So you kind of want to make sure that you the battery is facing you the whole time when you first start flying. So you want to keep it like that and just fly. You don't really need to be able to turn the copter around because you can go in every direction just by turning the sticks. So we can see that we've still got full, we've still got a full battery and we've got green flashing. The red is always going to be on in the front of the copter. That tells you uh, which side the front is. But um, yeah, let me show you how all this stuff works. So basically GPS mode, that means that the copter is going to keep itself where it is. It's going to keep itself stable. You see it's kind of drifting a little bit. But if we take it off GPS mode, it's attitude mode. Um, now you can see it's flashing, it's flashing yellow. Basically that means you see it'll constantly drift now because of the wind. So I'll have to keep correcting it because the GPS isn't keeping it in one place. It's not using satellites. So you can see it's still drifting over to the right now. So we put it back into GPS mode. You see how it stabilizes itself. And then uh, these buttons, which I spoke about earlier in the video, uh, off, course lock and home lock. I'm gonna show you how those work quickly. So basically, if we go forward, now, I don't know if you can see the Phantom over there, uh, but it becomes very difficult to figure out which way you're facing. So I've now just turned the Phantom around and say I want to go towards myself, uh, you know, I want to come back this way. Actually, no, it's going away from me now. And when the cop is far away, you can't tell which is which. It's very, very difficult. So right now, I'm pressing towards me, but the cop is actually going away from me. Um, so that's a really easy way to lose this thing. So what I've gone and enabled is something called home lock. So I'll switch this down to home lock. And what that means is that this direction backwards will always be to the center point of where I am. So wherever it was, I can't even see the thing now. Yep, it's right up over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this all the way back. And the copter knows that its home point was set because I waited for it to, uh, to find its home point, basically for the GPS to be enabled. Um, it knows that this is the home point so I could go pretty much any direction as long as I push back It's gonna come back to me over here So that's a really really useful function, especially if you don't have FPV You don't really know where you are with this thing because it can just disappear so quickly Once we're back now, I can see the cop I can turn it around and I can switch it back to Switch back off the home lock and then I can fly normally again what I've been practicing for when I attach the Zenmuse I've been trying to teach myself to do circles keeping the camera facing one direction uh, another thing that I've been practicing is uh, catch landings because uh, I've chewed up so many props just trying to land if there's a little bit of a breeze like this uh, it gets really difficult to land because the skids aren't very wide so it's very easy for the copter to fall over so what I've been practicing is just Coming up and this is when the NASA M function is enabled. I can just use the one stick to switch off the motors. So all I'll do is I'll make sure it comes down slowly. I grab it and then I'll just hold the motors down in the middle and it'll switch off for me.
Oh, are you then? Yeah, we're getting done. We've got our first battery warning. That red first flashing light means it's done to 25%. So I reckon that's it. The wind's picking up, so let's call it a day. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys learned something.